People often ask me how we teach the heel. Well, this is part of the process, and this is the beginning part of the process. So we've got a one-year-old husky cross male here, and um, he is on a pinch collar, and uh, we are training him with a combination of pressure and food to stay on the left side and remain in the position. Now, he's a little bit more of a... Uh, stronger dog and, and, and a little bit more physically resistant. Um, not much upsets him. So with him, the pressure is a little bit higher than maybe with a sensitive dog and he's not afraid to go and try to pick food up off the ground and so on and so forth. So again, you know, I like to show the process in all its glory so I don't uh, remove the corrections from the equation. You're going to see the corrections as well as the rewards. So with this dog, what we do in the beginning, we walk nice and slow and we just start creating that focus. The dog does not have to stare constantly like he's doing it now because it's the beginning stages. We're not gonna correct him for looking away or anything like that because it's not a focus heel. What he's learning is to walk next to the handler and pay attention to her um, without leaving her side. What a lot of people do is they just hold the leash tight and they start walking and think that the dog's learning. You'll notice that the leash between her and the dog is loose. And whenever he moves out of position, she pops him directionally back into the position that he's supposed to be. So you see he gets, he gets distracted by things. Um, you know, he tries to pick food up off the ground. He leaves the position. She pops him directionally back into the position like that. And then when he's back in the position, there's praise and there is a reward. You'll notice she doesn't pez dispense the food because again, we're creating a functional behavior here. We're not looking to create, um, you know, sports style healing where the dog stares fixedly at the handler. And the reason for that is because I expect this dog, you know, eventually to be able to heal if necessary for 10, 15 minutes straight, you know, and, and he doesn't have to look at the handler to do that. He just needs to pay attention to where she is in relation to him. So the occasional glance at the handler is fine. As you can see, he's young and, and he's new to the process and he's distracted quite easily, but there's nothing wrong with that. You also see that she moves very slowly. All dogs want to have, naturally, a lot of dogs move fast. That's what they do. So if you move fast, the dog's only going to get more excited and he's going to concentrate a lot less. Here you can see now he's kind of pushing her a little bit for the food because he wants to go and she's not letting him go. So he's like, okay, well, give me something. And she's asking for more concentration before she rewards him. She's asking for him to settle and to calm down. There you go. And then uh, he's almost ready for the reward. Not quite yet. There you go. And you can see he gives her maybe like a few seconds of attention. And then he looks off at something else. And the looking, again, is not, the, not where the correction comes. The correction, and really it's not much. It's just a tiny pop on the leash, is for just when the dog leaves the position. So people always ask me, how do you train your dogs to heal off leash? Well, in the beginning, they have to heal on the leash. And this is how we teach them to heal on the leash. Nice and, uh, you know, slow, relaxed pace, and just getting the dog used to being on that in that position on the left side and receiving a reward on the left side. So this is how we, we start the process. Okay, guys, so this is Stormy. This is actually the... Uh, Husky that was in our recall video, um, how to train the recall part one, even with Huskies. Um, so Stormy's uh, in the final process of learning the off-leash heel here, and, and, and she's with her trainer. Um, so you can see now that there's obviously no leash. It's just the e-collar, the trainer, praise, and food. So in the beginning, you saw step one with that young Husky there, Bolt. Now you see Stormy. You know, she's basically off the leash. She understands the behavior that is desired. Again, she doesn't have to stare continuously at the handler. She does because she likes her handler and she wants food and she wants praise and all that type of stuff. Um, and she, when she makes a mistake or becomes distracted or puts her nose on the ground, the handler will say, ah, ah, and correct her. And then when the dog becomes correct, she will be praised and rewarded. And this is the final stages of the process. And you can see the dog has learned that the left side is a happy place. It's a good place. Nice things happen here. And Sima has done a fantastic job with her. And, you know, there's praise, there's rewards. You know, people think, people become one-dimensional with their rewards, just as they're one-dimensional with their corrections. You know, this dog understands that the reward can be a play with the handler and that the reward can be food, you know. So it's, you're, you 
you don't have a dog who's reliant on one thing. You have a dog that, you know, enjoys working and enjoys playing and has a good time doing it. So this is going to be a dog that, that becomes reliable and can perform this behavior anywhere and everywhere. So now we're going to go outside. Oh, and you can see there, the dog was corrected because we're outside. Now there's more distractions. And, you know, the dog was smelling the ground and didn't immediately come to the heel. So when we ask the dog to do something, if she chooses instead to smell um, or, or to ignore the, the handler and not respond right away, of course, there must be a correction for this. This is where the, obliga the obligation comes into play. A lot of people make their their training too one-dimensional it's either all force or all f all praise and food and neither one of those is going to work well for you a good combination is 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 what's ideal and and you have to know how to do so you can see here there's already a problem the dog's kind of getting in front a little bit she tends to forge and it's because she's not paying attention so what does the handler do the handler is slowing down right she's slowing down and she's making the dog walk slow now walk fast Sima now go slow Oh, and you can see there, there's a mistake. And when she slows down, when the dog gets ahead of her, she corrects her. Fast, slow, correction. Yeah. Turn left. That's the other thing. You see the dog kind of crowding a little bit now. Whereas inside, she was in a very nice position and she wasn't making mistakes. Now she's crowding a little bit the trainer. Right? So, and that's just because she's less attentive out here. There's way more distractions. And this is why, you know, good training involves a proofing process where you take the dog to different locations and you proof the, the, the behavior and you make sure that the dog understands. It doesn't matter what's going on around. You must, you must show the same behavior everywhere. And this is something that dogs, you have to understand, dogs do not generalize. Break and play a little bit. So now I'm gonna have the, the, the trainer break and play with the dog because we put a fair bit of pressure on her just there. So now I want her to blow off some steam, have a good time, do what Huskies love to do, which is run, right? So she's just gonna play with her handler. There's not gonna be any obedience for a few seconds here and we're just gonna have good times. Okay, back to work, healing. Good. And you can see that transition, right? Where the dog transitions um, into play and just has a great old time and then back to work. And that's a really important thing that a lot of people miss in their training. It's like, okay, they, they think, okay, well, I, I'm training this dog and, you know, she has to do it. So it's going to be military training all the time and, and there's no fun involved. And it's like, that's, that's a stupid thing to do. That's how you have a dog that looks like crap. If you want your dog to look happy in the training, you are able to motivate your dog and you're also able to teach your dog that they that he or she is obligated to do things so you can see here you know again i'm showing all the corrections right you're seeing the corrections and yeah play a little bit you're seeing all the corrections with the dog and you see that the corrections don't bother her too much because she understands the corrections for what they are it's not a personal thing it's just information and and the information is there so that she understands what it is that she should be doing and um, it gives her that clarity so in the end you're gonna see this dog you know completely off leash everywhere and and she'll be reliable in the behavior all right do some healing so what I like to do with dogs that tend to forge and crowd which she isn't really doing right now you saw it more in the beginning maybe go on the driveway she might do it there is I like to do fast slows so do a fast slow Seema fast and then slow oh and do that again. So you can see the dog made a mistake, right? There you go. And when I do fast slows, what I'm making clear to the dog is that he or she must be in the correct position. When the dog, and you can see the dog constantly gets in front. Let's do some more fast slows. Just just couple paces fast, couple paces slow. And then uh, maybe a bigger correction when she gets in front. Not that fast. Go slower. Yeah. There you go. And keep doing it until she's good. It's okay, you, you can just keep going down, but it's okay, go, go forward. And the reason I had the trainer go back to the driveway is because I saw that the behavior was worse on the driveway. So this is where I'm gonna fix the problem. When you turn left into her, if, you, if she hits your knee, then you're gonna make the electric. Slow, good, there we go again, fast, slow, good. And now you can see that the dog is not getting ahead she she when the trainer slows down she doesn't just shoot ahead of the trainer when your dog isn't paying attention properly and when you have a forging problem this is how i fix it fast slow fast slow fast slow and then after a while the dog learns don't get ahead now she's getting a little bit behind so when she gets behind you're going to just speed up 
there and walk oh. through her. Fast. Slow. Good. Good. Fast. Slow. Oh, Good. Girl. That's so much better. Yeah. Now watch the crowding though. And she starts crowding, you're gonna start do a 180 left slow. And if she gets on your leg, you're going to give her a little bump and, a, and an electric. That's very nice. That was yeah, good. I like that. Right. Some dogs, they'll crowd you so hard on the left side that you can't even turn left. And people, what people often try to do is they try to kind of run around the dog. And that's a mistake. What we teach the dog to do is yield off the left leg. And you can see her again, a little bit of pressure. Don't, don't let her push you off to the side. See, if she is pushing, then mm -hmm. you can give her a bit of a knee there. This is good. That's a perfect oh. position. So this dog needs yeah. more fast slows. Um, she needs some left turns um, and a little bit more proofing under distraction and then she'll be pretty much finished.